so we'll uh, get Nestor on after. Yeah, Adriana. we'll get Nestor on after. Uh, Adriana, we were just really kind of wanted to ask you, uh, you know, I, I kind of felt like, was that an announcement the governor made yesterday about uh, canceling classes for the end of the school year? What, what can you tell us about this? Right. So, yeah, during yesterday's press conference, I believe she said she rec is going to recommend canceling the, uh, you know, ending the school year early. And we haven't heard a, a definite, you know, answer on that from the Department of Education, Education just yet. But we do know, I know that I spoke with GDOE last week and they said that they have a board meeting this Wednesday on April 8th at 3 p.m. and they plan to discuss how to move forward. And in addition to that, uh, Speaker Tina Munya Barnes recently introduced a legislation just last week that would waive the service learning requirement and that is essential if they do want to end um, school year early. They have to have that waived and it would have to go through legislation and the bill would have to be passed. So there, I mean, there's some talk, right, of it happening. And um, as of right now, it still hasn't been determined just yet. But we know that they are there are steps leaning towards that way. And um, with the governor's recommendation as well, um, then it could quite possibly be that. Not to mention, uh, you know, now it is the, I mean, now every, the lockdown is until May 5th, and school, the school year only goes a few weeks shortly after that, right? Until a few more weeks after that. Right. So they will have a big decision to make coming, um, you know, coming soon. But um, another question that could come up from that then is, you know, the grab and go meal program, because right now so many parents are depending on that program. So if they end the school year early, then does the meal program go as well with that? And then what kind of local assistance will come into play for people that are depending on this breakfast and lunch meals? Every Stop day? asking about local assistance. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're right, Adron. I mean, you're, you're right. It's a valid question. It is. It really is. I'm sorry. You know, let me just throw that in there real quick. <laughs> but, um, you know, that is, I mean, it is something that it'll definitely, it'll make a big difference because, just last week when I had spoke with GDOE um, spokeswoman Issa Baza, she had told me that they have distributed roughly, I think it was 170,000 meals in total. And that was, that's just been since the start. So 170,000 meals since the past two, three weeks, almost three weeks. So they basically fed every person on Guam. Of course. Yeah. Right, yeah. Honestly, if you really think about it. And then that includes not even just lunch, that's breakfast and lunch. Yeah. And she said they reached uh, 12,000 for both breakfast and lunch, and then they had to open up a 12th location in the north. Adriana, so. you know, based on your conversations with all the players involved with the grab and go, does it kind of seem like this is something that GDOEs, uh, you know, doing on their own? Are they in conversation with the governor's office? You know, you would think that when they make these uh, calls to extend the orders, even though it's a rapidly evolving situation, that important things like, I don't know, feeding people every day might come into play? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they have, I mean, it's a government agency, so I'm sure they have to discuss it with, you know, the governor and Adelaide, but it would be nice if we did see, you know, if we were able to see the superintendent at the press conference, because this is a big issue, and then we could see some of the direct dialogue, and we could also have direct dialogue with him as well there. Not that he hasn't been open, because he's always very open. He always, he responds to me once I message him a lot, so not that he's not um, open to right. him, but... That way we could see how it, you know. I mean, let's just be real. The Department of Education is a huge, if not the biggest agent. I mean, they are the biggest agency in the government of Guam, and I don't understand why they don't have a seat at the table. You're absolutely right. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's, yeah. Maybe they're still mad about the charter school thing or something. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, especially just, I mean, I think that having him at even having a uh, you know chief of police at the right that, yeah like, so and just like, just I just got information that this, the grab and go program even despite the extension of the public health emergency is it's still going right, on yeah you can still pick up your bre your breakfast and your lunch mm -hmm. um, at any of the uh, eleven or twelve twelve locations. twelve locations they got a new one yep. yeah yep so it is still going on and as is their uh, their website it's still up there right please as well so they're, those are all still going on right now yeah and that's a that to me that would fall under essential life uh, sustaining services mm -hmm. so that would be probably one of the i mean i'm guessing that one of the um allowances under the new orders that came down yeah 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 but yeah so they are all still going that um the 12th distribution site is um forgive me if i say this wrong but 
Maria Ujoya <laughs> Elementary Ujoya. School. Ujoya. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I even practiced it for <laughs> last week. <laughs> but yeah, so that is the top location in the north as of right now. <laughs> It's okay. And again, that's um, still 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. daily. But um, while I'm on here, real quick, if I could... Just, sure, yes, Adriana. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, yeah, while you're here. Oh, thank you. No, if I could, just real quick, just because I, I had an interview last week with um, Dr. Judy Wanpat um, in regards to vic victim advocates reaching out. You know, Vero, she's the president of Vero, and I just want to throw out that the hotline, if I could, on here real quick, just for... Any, um, you know, anyone that may be a victim of dom domestic violence during this time, just so they know that there is a hotline and they can also visit the website. So if I could just throw the number out there real quick, um, just again, it's 671-477-5552. Um, yeah, it was, it was very interesting to, or I shouldn't even say interesting, but it was touching to talk to Dr. Juan Pan. She just mentioned some things that I didn't even think about at first. Um, you know, when you think about people that could be in the situation right now and how they could also, I mean, for all we know, there could be victims that are being, that the threat is that they're uh, being withheld me any medical treatment. So mm -hmm. uh, we don't know the situations that everyone is in right now. So I just, I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, I, I talked to her uh, last week too, and, and she had told me uh, something that got to me. Um, she said that what they're, what they're seeing now is uh, uh, women are having to, uh, isolate with their abusers and they're getting calls mm -hmm. where women start to talk and then they do a quick hang up where um you know the uh suspected abuser will then call back trying to figure out where this you know so just knowing that a lot of women out there are mm -hmm. stuck with these um yeah a-holes yeah yeah, yeah. It, but you know, on, on the other side of that too, Adriana, it's good to know that there are people like we've we've talked with East Psychological Services that that these people they're still doing what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. they could get a COVID hero shout out or something. Oh yeah. Oh, there are heroes. Yeah, of course. And she had mentioned that they had been receiving an uptick in off island um, callers, people that know that their family members are sometimes put in these distress situations. And, but, you know, whenever someone calls from off-island or some, whenever the victim themselves is not called, they cannot do anything. Right. Because they can't make the call that puts them in more danger. Yeah. They can't mm -hmm. do any on-site visits. So, you know, you uh, said something about the chief of police, and I want to kind of echo that, too. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe, oh. a, maybe a call-out, because uh, I actually tweeted something last night, and I was thinking about um, all the people we're not hearing from, you know, like... Um, yeah. We're not hearing from the lieutenant governor. Uh, we're not hearing from former governor Carl Gutierrez. Uh, it just and it irks me because there's so many issues just falling in the cracks. There's what are we doing to shelter the homeless? We had two uh, homeless people mm -hmm. test positive for COVID-19. When you ask about it, it's like, oh, we're still figuring it out. We're still figuring it out. Uh, but you know, even telling us you're still figuring it out on a daily basis so that we can share it with everybody who's waiting is better than silence. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and we so, do hear from Paul Tapout. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that at a time like this, knowing that we're locked down for another month, I think people want to see uh, the chief of police out here uh, doing a message saying, hey, uh, be safe. This is what we need you guys to do. Uh, this is what we're going to be doing to keep you guys safe. It just really, uh, the silence is deafening. And, mm -hmm. and people, like we've been saying since the start of this, if, if there's a void, people are going to mm -hmm. fill it. I'll reach out to Steve and see yeah. if we can get him on. Oh, yeah. totally, yeah. yeah. I know early on I had reached out to the chief and um, Sergeant Tapal had asked me to go straight to him for anything, um, which is typical, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, especially, you know, all the respective heads of every agency right now. I yes. Think, uh, yeah, it makes a big difference. They should be at these press conferences. I mean, let the experts talk. Uh, we want to hear, you know, the governor. I mean, God bless her heart. She is working so hard. There's just so much on her plate. And I feel like uh, we could take some of that off her plate by folding in the, you know, some of these competent people that she has on our team that we're all wondering about. You know, we're all wondering, like, like you said, why isn't John Fernandez there? Where's the chief of police? Where's the lieutenant governor? You know, someone made it funny to me. They said the lieutenant governor's biggest problem in these press conferences is trying to figure out how to not get blocked by the, the sign language interpreter. <laughs> Stop. I'm sorry. That's the, that's what. <laughs> hey, I'm not even saying that. That's what people are saying. You know, and I, I did the video over the weekend, and that was one of the things that people really responded to. Is they said, "Yeah, we want to hear more from Josh Tenorio." Mm -hmm. So it yeah. is what it is. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, way I to go, Guam Fire, though. I yeah, way to go, Guam. I understand the. I think uh, some of the frustration behind all of this, of course. I mean, we all get it. Yeah, um, yeah. And it is. I mean, I was even thinking about it the other day because even you know because we reach out and we're constantly having this is stuff that we deal with when we're trying to get anything communicated right but people are finally seeing what we go through sometimes i think Mm -hmm. (laughs) we're trying to reach out for this information right yeah um people kind of get to see what we go through on the daily because you know i mean even before all this crisis i'd be like did they respond to you chris yeah chris i'll message her let me yeah yeah I mean, that's the thing is that that this is nothing new, and it, but it's more it's more amplified because hey, before yeah. this COVID, they weren't transparent at all. Yeah. They were not transparent, no matter what they say. And now we're starting to see the lack of transparency. And I, I mean, they're trying, you know, they're they're really trying, but there needs to be a better division of work so that uh, we can get some progress and uh, find out, you know, um, what these people are doing and what are we doing to address all these uh, different uh, groups of our community, the most vulnerable that are just, you know, falling down the cracks as we speak. Yeah. Okay, Adriana. Thanks, Adriana. (laughs) Thank you, guys. Okay. All right, Adriana. uh, Coter, wash your hands. Cotero from the... uh, (laughs) She gave me some advice last night. She was like, have you tried meditating? You know? What is that? Like, just like, home? What is that? Kind of like, what? (laughs) What is that? Like, just... Breathe in, breathe out. Kind of sounds like we need to interview somebody about meditating, right? That might be a good one.